Hello and welcome to Mike's Red Hat Storage videos. My name is Mike Flannery and I'm a Storage Solution Architect at Red Hat. In this video, we're going to be creating a Ceph cluster using the Red Hat Storage Console. In a previous video, we installed the Storage Console, and if you'd like to review that, please find that video and do so before proceeding. Let's get started. To install the monitor and OSD nodes, we first have to have a base configuration. That includes enabling the proper repositories, doing the first update, and rebooting the system. To help facilitate that, I've opened up terminals as root to all of the nodes, the three mons and the three OSDs, on, that comprise my cluster. On the mons, remember, we've already executed these first three commands, so I'm going to start with the subscription manager, do a yum, and do a yum update. For the OSDs, we have different repositories that we want to enable. So I'm going to enable those and then do the yum update on the OSDs as well. All right, now we're back into all of the nodes. We can proceed. Next, we need to make sure that the firewall is enabled and running. And then we need to set the appropriate firewall, uh, open the appropriate firewall ports for each different type. On the MONS, we will open up ports 6789 and 8002. And on the OSDs, we'll open up a range of ports. Next, we install NTP on all nodes. Copy the host file from the admin server to all nodes. Copy the ntp.conf file to all nodes. Make sure that NTP is enabled and started on all nodes. Execute NTP dash or NTPQ dash P on each node to verify that it's working and that we have the right group. And so far we do. Everything looks good. All right, now on the mons, we execute this. I think it's the same one for the 
LSDs as well, to be honest with you. Yeah, looks like it's exactly the same. I'll cut it from here, but All right, now if we go back to our window, we'll start to see the hosts pop up here, and they'll also show up in this host section here. Three mons, three OSDs. We're going to go ahead and accept all. And what this is going to do is accept the host, and I believe that it installs a little bit of software on each one of them as well. All right, all of our hosts have been accepted and initialized. We go over to hosts, we can see them. Uh, we can see that they are there. Uh, they don't have a role and they're not assigned to any cluster right now. So let's go ahead and create a cluster. I'm gonna make a small journal because I don't have a lot of room here. I want all the nodes to be part of the cluster and it's already assigned the monitor nodes to a role of monitor, the OSD nodes to the role of OSD. We also see that the OSDs have three disks, uh, each disk totaling 10 gigabytes for a total of 30 additional gigabytes per node. We're going to use the 122 network for both the cluster and the access network just to make things simple. We don't have any disks that are considered SAS or SSD, but we do have those 10 gig virtual disks that were created uh, when we created the virtual machines. And we're gonna go ahead and create the cluster. Creating the cluster does take some time, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video or actually end the video here. Our next video, video number four, is gonna pick up um, with uh, connecting to the Ceph storage using the Rados block device. Stay tuned for that. Thank you.